This weekend, you join us on our recent trip to Borrowdale back in September. We spent our time climbing, swimming, and getting ourselves into some sticky situations. Oh, this is not ideal. That is rain. That's not the easiest down climb. We got lost. Stay tuned for the full story. So we've come up very, very late last night. I think we arrived about 1.30 in the morning and I slept terribly. We're going through a bit of a September heat wave at the moment. It was still like 23 or 24 degrees when we woke up this morning, but we've chugged some coffee and we're now at the Bowderstone car park in Borrowdale. We're going to head to Steel Knots Crag for a bit of trad and then I think we're going to meet up with Daisy and Pete. So Daisy's my sister and Pete is her boyfriend and the plan is to go to Black Moss Pot. It's like this um, natural swimming pool place with jumping in points but I guess the first thing that we need to do is actually pack because <laughs> it's like 11.30 and we haven't left yet. We could walk 10 minutes down the road cross the bridge 10 minutes back the other way until we're just just there at the other side of the river or we could use Rob's cutting secondary plan which is to take our shoes off and wade the river should save at least 20 minutes so we've just arrived at the suspected crossing on the River Derwent and all of my fears were pointless because it's extremely shallow and very easy to cross. I mean we will need to remove our shoes but hopefully this will save some time in getting to the crag and it's also extremely pretty. Well that was probably the most fun approach I've ever had. I mean it's not over yet, we have to now maybe bushwhack our way up to the bottom of the crag and try and find the footpath. Off we go. To steel knots. Tell you what, it's bloody hot though. We're in the shade right now and I'm melting slightly. And conveniently Rob has forgotten his chalk bag. We'll see how that goes, because you're definitely going to need some chalk. Made it to the base of Steel Knot, and I've just geared up to have a stab at the Lost Boys, which is a HVS. I don't have the uh, best track record for HVSs. On the Army Dreamers in St Govans, I actually had to take a rest and ended up falling because the nut that I was resting on ripped and then I subsequently had like an eight metre fall, so it was pretty huge. So I'm a bit nervous, but we'll see how it goes. Might have to back off or, or I'll be successful. We'll see at the top. fun, apart from the uh, absolutely horrendous rope drag, because um, I decided to climb on a single rather than two ropes. Other than that, an excellent HVS. Rob is racking up for Meandering Maggot, which is a E15B. Daisy and Pete should be here in about an hour, so probably just do this and head on over to Black Moss Pot. River crossing two was a different affair. My shoes only came off for one step. Uh, we picked a slightly better place with an island in the middle. 
means that the flow was a lot um, gentler and even shallower than the previous place. The talking about it as if it's like the most epic thing ever. It's this tiny little stream. It's like six inches deep. Lucy would like to point out when we first set out and we saw them up the path, we had this like, oh, it's a great idea. Oh, we're going to be so unique and special. And then we get here and almost everyone else just crosses the stream in the same way. <laughs> Some time later, we met my sister Daisy and her partner Pete in the hopes of cooling off in Black Moss Park as it was still unusually warm for this time of year. We enjoyed the golden light of a rapidly setting sun for all of about 15 minutes before we realised we may be heading in completely the wrong direction. We got halfway up Scarfell Pike before realising... <laughs> we were going the wrong way. <laughs> Sorry, we're committed. Oh no. We're committed. That's the, wrong way. <laughs> uh, the backup plan is just do Scarfell Pike real quick. Ooh, I felt rain. The backup plan is return to the vans and have <laughs> dinner. Unenthusiastic about Rob's idea to walk up and over Scarfell to get to Black Moss Pot. It looks sunny. We turned around and headed back the way we came to find the actual footpath. Should we have our conversations in reverse on the way back? Without access to any kind of offline or paper map, the navigation to Black Moss Pot was purely garnered from poor judgement and a foggy memory, and it was at this moment that Rob had the misguided thought to take a shortcut. An update on the Black Moss Pot swim. After going half an hour in the wrong direction, we have now gone half an hour plus 15 minutes in the right direction. Uh, I spotted a shortcut. <laughs> I can't believe they bought it. Um, so we're now going up a hill to then go down the other side to then swim in the pot. I think it was probably the longest shortcut I have ever been on and involved bushwhacking through tick infested bracken only to find ourselves standing above a steep cliff staring down at the valley floor where the now obvious path had appeared. Just when I thought all hope was lost of a big adventure, Lucy decided to hack randomly through the bracken in her own idea of where the footpath might be. With the light rapidly fading and all of us hungry and tired, we cut our losses, called it a day, and instead enjoyed handmade pizzas and beers in the Sea Toller bus shelter. The sign said beer, and more beer, and good chats. We've just woken up maybe like an hour ago um, to go to Black Moss Pot this morning because yesterday was an absolute shambles. So we parked at Sea Toller and started heading up the approach path to Scarfell. Had to turn around, took a shortcut suggested by Rob. Mm. What have you got to say for yourself? I want to go back off that. Took this pointless shortcut, ended up going on the wrong side of the valley up this hill and then couldn't get back onto the path. And then by the time we did get back onto the path, it was too late and we had to turn around. The plan is now to go to Black Moss Pot this morning instead. <laughs> I'm literally dying. Never seen a sheep before. This is terrible. After our swim. Rob and I decided to go for a quick climb at Sergeant Craig's Labs just across the way. The route finding palaver continues where we uh, had this grand plan to go to Sergeant Craig's Labs and um, walked straight past it and had to double back and now all the swimming that we did in Black Moss Pot was for nothing because both of us dripping sweat again. Look at Rob. So hot. <laughs> I think we're kind of chasing a weather window right now. Apparently, it's going to rain at 12. It's currently 11 30. It's going to be a one route crag. Hopefully, some kind of classic HVS. There's a classic HVS and a classic E2. So, one of them. Probably not the E2, given how tired Rob has been complaining 
today. Oh. I don't normally stop. It's a flat valley walk and it's just that little bit too hot and uncomfortable to really pace it. Well, this is not ideal. Super steep approach. Really muggy. But it's kind of dying a little bit. It's lagging badly. So what was a beautiful morning has now turned into potentially racing a thunderstorm. We've also made this slightly annoying discovery that it's a 50 meter abseil or a dangerous descent to walk and we've only got a 60 meter rope so this might have been for nothing. Oh god. The advantage of having a drone is that you can use it to check the weather when you can't see. That is rain. That's miles off. Like, that's blue sky. I appreciate there's some dark clouds there. That's and right. that's rain. Almost above us, Rob. That is rain. We've got time. It's got to be quick now. Despite the looming thunderstorm, I decided to give the route a crack. That was until the rain started. Um. Really tempted just to go up a little bit and put a bale beaner in. That's not the easiest down climb. At this point, there were only two options. Send the route in the pouring rain, risk an epic, or bail while I still could. Neither scenario was particularly appealing, and that down climb looked proper sketchy. But with the Lake District being known for sandbags and run out climbs, I decided that bailing was the best option. We're backing off this crag. The rain has just started, and uh, we heard a roll of thunder just a minute ago. Now, the route does look just so good. It is incredible, but alas, the rain has scuppered our ability to actually send this. I'm glad we called it when we called it. I got like one clip of uh, Rob on the HVS and now it's absolutely pissing it down. And we were up there, well Rob was, with a ominous sound of thunder coming from up the valley and it's just hit us, just as Rob got off. So I think we're going to scramble away back to the van Oh, you can just, all you can do is laugh. For fuck's sake. <laughs> Rob's bag cover is doing a stellar job of not keeping his bag very dry. Ugh. And it's currently very wet and slippery, so this descent is shit. Absolute wall of rain coming. That was a disgusting descent. Every rock has just become a death trap. Super slippery. My legs are absolutely drenched from hacking through the bracken. I'm just glad we decided to back off when we did because that would have been a fucking scary down climb. That route, the Lakeland Cragsman, was just incredible. It was given a top 50 rating. Just the crimps went on forever. There was great gear, it was fun. The holds were good, it wasn't too polished. It was in an amazing setting. Of the mountains you now no longer can see behind me. We're gonna have to go back and send that. It's on the bucket list. The only other slightly disappointing thing that we came across here was just the sheer amount of rubbish left by other ramblers and walkers. We turned up at Black Moss Park and it was just like a bit of a cesspit. Second bag of shit. First one's over there. It's just people leaving cans and apple cores, orange peel, underwear. Me and Daisy went around and picked up a couple of bags and there's just, there's more than we could take back. It's just very disappointing to see people coming to such a beautiful area and just leaving their shit and not taking it with them. On a slightly more positive note, we ended our trip with a rainy swim in Derwent water and 
left the lakes in one of the heaviest downpours we've ever seen. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you on the next adventure.